Hello and welcome to Oathbreaking News, your Oathbreaker news source brought to you by the Signature Spell Bomb. Today we are bringing you the last of the Core 2021 spoilers. Just a quick reminder, if you like what we do here, then you can help us out by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. If you see any new cards that are covered in this video that you want for your decks or for your collection, please order them from my friends at Mythic Games. I will put all of their information in the description. In this episode, we will be finishing our coverage of the Core 2021 Spoiler Season. This is part 5 of our Spoiler Season series for Core 2021. I would like to thank everyone who has made it to the end of this with me. Parts 3, 4, and most likely this part will do terribly on the channel, but I want to be diligent and complete the things I start. It's just the kind of guy I am. This week. This will be the last of the Oathbreaking News spoiler videos, because in the future we will be approaching spoilers differently in a new series called Da Bomb New Cards. Please look forward to it. If you want to check out the earlier videos in this series, I have put together a playlist. There will be links in the description if you want to view all the cards that have been revealed for the Core 2021 set. Let's continue to look at the spoiled cards and how they are likely to affect the format. I will try to keep coverage brief and to the point. On Saturday, June 13th, 2020, the following cards are spoiled. Scavenging Ooze, which costs one and a green. It's a 2-2. Two, two. You pay one green, you exile a card from a graveyard. <clears throat> if it was a creature card, you can put a 1-1 counter on Scavenging Ooze and you gain one life. Palladium Mirror. For 3 colorless mana is a 2-2 two, two mirror creature that taps for 2 colorless mana. And that'll do it for that day. On Sunday, June 14th, 2020, the following cards were spoiled. Kite Sail Freebooter, which is a reprint, costs 1 in black. He's a 1-2 human pirate with flying. When he enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it and exile that card until Kite Sail Freebooter leaves play. This is pretty nice because it's like a limited version of Duress printed on a creature. Sublime Epiphany costs 4 and 2 blue. It's an instant with multiple modes. You can choose one or more. Counter target spell. Counter target activated or triggered ability. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. And target player draws a card. All in all, when you take all these modes into effect, this is probably the card Mark Rosewater was hinting at that has 25 total different um, collection of choices you can make. Rada, Heart of Keld, for one a red and a green, is a 3-3 legendary elf warrior. As long as it's our turn, she has first strike. We may look at the top card of our library at any time, and we may play land cards off the top of our library. For four a red and a green, she gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is the number of lands we control. And that's going to do it for the cards that were spoiled on June 14th, 2020. On Monday, June 15th, the following cards were spoiled. Twin Blade Assassin. It costs three, a black, and a green. It's a 5-4 Elf Assassin at the beginning of your end step. If a creature died this turn, draw a card. Unleash Fury costs one and a red. It's an instant, and you double the power of target creature till end of turn. Ghostly Pilfer costs one and a blue. Whenever Ghostly Pilfer becomes untapped, you may pay two if you do draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, you can draw a card. And you can discard a card, and Ghostly Pilfer can't be blocked this turn. It's a 2-1 Spirit Rogue. Baron, Tolarian Archmage, costs one and two blue. He's a 2-2 Legendary Creature, Human Wizard. When he enters the battlefield, we return up to one target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. This is a good way to reset some of our planeswalkers that only have minus abilities. It could be seen as a protection spell if you have a way to play it at instant speed. It's probably still going to be better in EDH than Oathbreaker. Than Oathbreaker. <clears throat> Next, we're going to get into a new cycle of shrines. While this, the shrines are pretty amazing, since we don't really have anything above a three-color commander, we can't really make good use of them in our format, but I do think they're pretty great cards. Sanctum of All costs one white, one blue, one black, one red, and one green. It's a legendary enchantment shrine. 
At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library or graveyard for a shrine card and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If an ability of another shrine you control would trigger while you control six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. Sanctum of the Fruitful Harvest costs two and a green. It's a legendary enchantment shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may add X mana of any one color to your mana pool, where X is the number of shrines you control. That's just really good ramp if you're built for it. Since you can only have one of each of these shrines and only a, a three color deck at most, your results may vary. You know, that means at most maybe you can have six or seven in play in your colors. Sanctum of Shattered Heights costs two and a red. It's a legendary enchantment shrine. If you pay one and discard a land card or a shrine card, it will deal X damage target creature or planeswalker where X is the number of shrines you control. Sanctum of Stone Fangs for one and a black is an enchantment shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is equal to the number of shrines you control. Sanctum of Calmerot Waters for three and a blue is a legendary enchantment shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may draw X cards where X is the number of shrines you control if you do discard a card. Sanctum of Tranquil Light costs one white. It's a legendary enchantment shrine. You pay five and a white. You can tap target creature. This ability costs one list to activate for each shrine you control. Next up, we have the card Nine Lives. It costs one and two white. It's enchantment with hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it. When nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. This is just a really interesting card. I've seen a lot of people come up with ways to build around it. We in the Oathbreaker format tend to look for ways to remove counters from permanents in order to protect ourselves from other people's Oathbreakers or to keep them from alting. So using those same methods to remove the counters from nine lives can make this a pretty impenetrable bubble that can be very hard for your opponents to get through. So this just feels like it's good for the format in general. Experimental Overload cost two. A red and a blue. It's a sorcery. You create an XX blue and red weird creature token where X is the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Then you may return an instance or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Exile experimental overload. I feel like it's expensive, but I also feel like it's an excellent signature spell for a spell slinger deck since it's going to guarantee you get key cards back from your graveyard to your hand, and it's going to make you some big attackers and blockers in the deck where you might not be running a lot of creatures otherwise. Ultimately, I just think it's a really fun is it card that I think could be just shenanigans all day long. Volcanic Geyser costs X and 2 red. It deals X damage to any target. Shackle Geist costs one and a blue. It's a 2-2 two -two spirit with flying. It can only block creatures with flying. And if we tap two and tap spirits we control, we can tap target creature we don't control. Okay, moving on. On the date of Tuesday, June 16th, the following cards are spoiled. This is going to be by far the longest day because this was all the remaining cards. There's a lot of reprints in this section, so I'm not actually going to call out the reprints just to try to keep this brief. Titanic Growth costs one and a green. It's an instant. Target creature gets plus four, plus four till end of turn. Track Down costs one and a green. It's a sorcery. We square eye three, reveal the top card of our library, and if it's a creature or land card, we draw a card. Snare Spinner costs one and a green. It's a one three with reach. Whenever it blocks a creature with flying, it'll get plus two, plus oh till end of turn. Thrashing Barontodon costs 1 and 2 green. It's a 3-4 dinosaur. We can pay 1 and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment, which is just good incidental hate to have for your opponents just in your deck. Skyward Sniper costs 1 green. It's a 1-2 elf archer with reach. If we pay 2 and a green, we can have it deal 1 damage to target creature with flying. Selesnian Training costs 1 and a green. It's an enchantment aura. We enchant a creature we control. When it enters the battlefield, we draw a card, and the enchanted creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and trample. Return to Nature costs one and a green. It's an instant. We choose one. We can destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile a card from a graveyard. Run afoul costs one green. Target opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. Honorary Dinosaur costs three and a green. It's a 2-2 two -two Death Touch Dinosaur. Whenever it attacks, if we control a creature with power four or greater, it gets an additional plus two, plus two till end of turn. 
Horaculus Vines costs one green. It's a 0-3 plant wall with Defender. We can pay two and tap it to, and sacrifice a creature with Defender to draw a card. Life Goes On costs one green. It's an instant. You gain four life. If a creature died this turn, you gain eight life instead. Hunter's Edge costs three and a green. It's a sorcery. You put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Then that creature deals damage equal to its power. Target creature you don't control. That's actually really good. I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but I'm a big fan of when I can bite an opponent's creature rather than having to fight it and put my own creature at risk. Gnarled Sage costs 3 and 2 green. It's a 4-4 four, four, reach. As long as you've drawn 2 or more cards this turn, it gets plus 0, plus 2, and has Vigilance. Jungle Hollow is one of 10 reprinted game lands we're gaining. All of these lands work similarly. They're all two color cards in the same colors as the Guilds of Ravnica. They all enter the battlefield tapped. When they enter the battlefield, we gain one life, and they tap for either of their mana colors. Silent Dark costs one colorless mana. It's an artifact. We can pay four and tap it and sacrifice it, and it'll deal three damage to target creature. Sky Scanner costs three. It's an artifact creature Thropter, one one with flying. One enters the battlefield, draw a card. Short Sword cost 1, it's an artifact equipment, the equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 1, and it equips for 1. Pestermite costs 2, it's a 2-1 two, Golem that has pay 2 colorless mana, add 1 mana of any color. This is really good for filtering those 3 mana decks. I don't see it played a lot in Oathbreaker since it doesn't actually generate us value, it just helps us fix. Forgotten Sentinel is a 4 cost Golem, 4-3, that enters the battlefield tapped. Epitaph Golem costs us 5 colorless mana. It's a 3-5 Golem. We can pay 2 colorless mana, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of our library. Chrome Replicator costs 5 colorless mana. It's a 4-4 Construct creature. When it enters the battlefield, if we control 2 or more non-land, non-token permanents with the same name as another, create a 4-4 colorless Construct artifact creature token. We will not be able to use this nine times out of ten it will work in a clone deck where you have cloned a creature you haven't played but since most decks are singleton and don't have that advantage it's not worth it at five mana in fact i don't think it's worth it in a clone deck at five mana Tourette org costs three in a red it's a four three ogre warrior it has reach whenever it enters the battlefield if you control another creature with power four or greater it deals two damage to each opponent Thrill of Possibilities costs one and a red. As additional cost to cast this card, you have to discard a card, and then you draw two cards. Turn to Slag costs three and two red. Turn to Slag deals five damage to target creature, and you destroy all equipment attached to that creature. Against the right deck, that is amazing. I have a friend that runs a uh, Nahiri deck that has all of the swords, you know, the Sword of Fire and Ice, those types of swords. that's running eight of them. And it's just terrifying to deal with. So turn to slag would really wreck his day. Shock costs one red, and it deals two damage to any target. Spell Gorger Weird costs two and a red. It's a 2-2 two, two Weird. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a 1-1 counter on it. Sure Strike costs one and a red. Target creature gets plus three plus O oh and gains first strike until the end of turn. Scorched by Dragonfire costs one and a red. It deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die, you exile it instead. Onika Org is a 4-2 Ogre Warrior for two and a red. Pitchburn Devils for four and a red is a 3-3 three, three creature that says when it dies, you deal three damage to any target. Hobble Fiend for one and a red is a 2-1 Devil with Trample. If you pay one and sack another creature, you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Goblin Wizardry for 3 and a red allows you to create two one one red Goblin Wizard creature tokens with prowess. That's actually pretty hilarious. Not only is it an instant that will trigger most of your prowess creatures or your creatures that care about you casting instants and sorceries, but it also creates two creatures with prowess. So I would love to see how people double that or what they do in order to really make use of that card. Crash Through costs one red. Creatures you control gain trample till end of turn and draw a card. Destructive Tampering costs two and a red. We choose one. We can destroy target artifact or creatures without flying can't block this turn. Fervor of the Bitten costs one red. It's an enchantment that gives target creature plus two plus two, and it has to attack each combat if able. 
which is just good value for one red mana. Brightburn for two and a red. Creatures we control gain plus two plus O till end of turn. Bone Pit Brute costs four and two red. It is a four five Cyclops with Menace. When enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus four plus O till end of turn. Walking Corpse is a 2-2 zombie for one and a black. Witch's Cauldron costs one black. It's an artifact. If we pay one a black and tap and sacrifice a creature, we gain one life and draw a card. Skeletal Archer costs three and a black. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. It's a 3-3 Skeleton Archer. Tavern Swindler costs one and a black. It's a 2-2 Human Rogue. If we tap it and pay three life, we can flip a coin. If we win the flip, we gain six life. That's risky and fun. If I was ever going to do a red-black kind of like chaos deck, she would definitely make the cut. Sanguine Indulgence for three and a black. This spell costs three less to cast if you've gained three or more life this turn, and you return two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Actually, that would be really good in most Sorn decks since um, the white-black Sorn out of War of the Spark automatically gives all your creatures lifelink. So for one black mana most of the time, it's good and even with a little bit of commander tax, that's good for getting back your killed vampires or whichever creature type you're really going for, but whatever you're playing with him. Mind Rot costs two and a black. Target player discards two cards. Rise Again costs four and a black. It's a sorcery. Turn target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's just a really good combo deck, especially if you're running some sort of dredge strategy or if you just have a big creature that when it comes into play, it just guarantees you a lot of val value. Masked Black Guard costs one and a black. It has flash. You pay two and a black. It gets plus one, plus one till end of turn, and it is a 2 1 human rogue. Infernal Scarring costs one and a black. Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus zero, oh, and when it dies, draw a card. Gloom Sower costs five and two black. It's an 8 6 horror. When it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller loses two life and you gain two life. That makes for a hard choice for your opponents, because either they block it and still lose life, but you gain some, or they don't block it and they take eight. So that's pretty cool. Fitted Imp costs one and a black. It's a 1-2 Imp with flying, and if you pay one black mana, it gains death touch till end of turn. Death Bloom Thalid costs two and a black. It is a 3-2 Fungus, and when it dies, you create a 1-1 one -one green Sapperling token. Crypt Lurker costs three and a black. It's a 3-4 Horror. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature or discard a card if you do draw a card. Blood Glutton costs 4 and a black. It's a 4-3 vampire with lifelink. Cage Zombie costs 2 and a black. It's a 2-3 zombie with pay 1 and a black and tap it. Each opponent loses 2 life. Activate this ability only if a creature died this turn. In a black zombie deck, that's just going to be back breaking. I don't see too many times somebody can't set that up to work every turn. Alchemist Gift costs one black mana. It's an instant, and target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains your choice of death touch or lifelink to end of turn. I would have liked if on a card like this they would have kept the keyword counters thing going from uh, the Aquarius set, but it looks like we're not going to. Verdalen Arcanist costs one in a blue. It's a Merfolk Wizard 1-3, and if we tap it, we can add a colorless mana to our mana pool that we can only spend on instant and sorcery spells. Wall of Runes costs one blue mana. It's a wall with Defender. When it enters the battlefield, we scry one, and it's a 0-4. Wish Coin Crab costs three in a blue, and it's a 2-5 crab creature. Tome Anima for three in a blue is a 3-3 three, three spirit, and it... Can't be blocked as long as we've drawn two or more cards in a turn. Rookie Mistake costs one blue until end of turn. Target creature gets plus zero, plus two. And another target creature gets minus two, minus zero. Roaming Ghost Light is three in two blue. It has flying. It's a three, two spirit. When it enters the battlefield, we return up to one target non-spirit creature to its owner's hand. Opt for one blue. Let's scry one and draw a card. Read the Tithes, cost five and a blue. Uh, it's a sorcery, and we choose one, draw three cards, or return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand. Frost Breath, cost two and a blue. We can tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Keen Guide Master, cost one and a blue. It's a two one human soldier. If we pay two and a blue, target creature gains flying till end of turn. Cancel, cost one and two blue, and it is one of the worst counter spells. 
Capture Sphere costs three and a blue. It has Flash, an Enchanted Creature. One Enchanted, one Capture Sphere enters the battlefield tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Warded Battlements cost two and a white. It is a wall. Uh, it's a zero three wall, and our attacking creatures get plus one plus O oh while it's in play. Swift Response costs one and a white. It's an instant says destroy target tapped creature. Staunch Shield Mate costs one white. It's a dwarf soldier and it's a one three. Secure the Scene costs one and a white. It's a sorcery. We exile target non land permanent. Its controller creates a one one white soldier creature token. That's actually pretty good removal. Being able to hit any non land permanent and giving them a one one in response will hurt a lot of players. It doesn't really deal with Oathbreakers since they'll just essentially go to the command zone, but I would still play that in white. Makeshift Battalion is two and a white. It's a 3-3 human soldier. Whenever Makeshift Battalion and at least two other creatures attack, put a 1-1 counter on it. Legion's Judgment costs two and a white. It's a sorcery that says destroy target creature with power four or greater. Feet of Resistance costs one and a white. It's an instant that says put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, and it gains protection from a color of your choice until end of turn. If you're running some kind of... Voltron strategy, where you're trying to armor up one creature and swing it through for the win. This is a great way to either help it evade your opponent's creatures or to protect it from a kill spell. Gale Swooper costs three and a white. It's a 3-2 griffin with flying. When enters the battlefield, target creature gains flying until the end of turn. Dub for two and a white. Enchants a creature, and the enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and a first strike, and is a knight in addition to its other types. It makes me wonder if there's going to be a dub step card eventually. That was a bad joke, I apologize. Concordia Pegasus costs one in white. It is a 1-3 flying Pegasus. Containment Priest costs one in a white. It is a 2-2 two -two human cleric with flash. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and wasn't cast, exile it instead. Aven Gagel Master costs three and two white. It's a four three bird warrior with flying. When Aven Gagel Master enters the battlefield, you get two life for each creature with flying you control. That's a really good effect for decks that are looking for it. It's definitely going to put you way out of reach of most one shot kills. So I now feel like I have a goal to build with that. <laughs> Anointed Choirister. For one white is a 2-2 two -two human cleric with lifelink. If you pay four and a white, it gets plus three plus three till end of turn. Daybreak Charger is a one and white three one unicorn. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two plus zero oh, till end of turn. Well, that was a lot of cards to go through, but at least we're finally done. Please check out the Jumpstart to Bomb new card videos that we'll be releasing next week for the Jumpstart spoilers. We will be uploading a Father's Day special deck tech either today or tomorrow, so please be on the lookout. And thank you for following me to the end of these uh, Core Set 2021 spoilers. Now that we have provided you with news and our opinion, please give us your thoughts in the comments below. What is your favorite card in 2021 Core Set? And is there a new Oathbreaker you can't wait to build a deck around? As you most likely noticed, I've been updating the look and feel of the Oathbreaking News episodes throughout the course of this series, so please let me know what you think. It really does matter to me. It helps me decide what direction to take the channel in. We have merchandise. If you want to show your support, please see the link in the description. Please check out our new Run With The Booster Pack merchandise. I know I did that last episode, but it was just so much fun I had to do it again. If you want to support the channel directly, please consider giving at patreon.com slash signature spell bomb or at paypal.me slash signature spell bomb. Alternatively, if you're more comfortable, there is also a buy me a coffee link in the description. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys and I wouldn't. Thanks again and I hope I don't see you in the headlines.